we have the biggest community on product led growth it's where people can get answers the introduction channel is very active for me that's one measure of health of a community if people ask questions we don't want to leave that open for an hour we want to respond to that within five minutes it's really important for them to feel like they're getting value out of the community Thanks, Ramli, for taking the time. And just to give you a context, Community Hub by Thredo is an initiative where we're putting together resources, uh, you know, the best practices followed by community builders from various walks of life and interviewing folks like you so that other community builders can take the best practices and apply it to their uh, communities. So I know product-led has a, a large number of things going and community is a part of it. So maybe taking a step back would be great to know about you and, and just product-led in general. Sure. My name is Ramley John, Managing Director at ProductLed. I run several things there, including a training program, the community, the YouTube channel. I recently wrote a book that became bestseller on Amazon called ProductLed Onboarding. Wes is the founder of this ProductLed growth. And yeah, community is such a big part of us. That's, we call it one of our core competitive advantage for the very reason that it's a way to just get in. Product-led growth is still new. Like it's been only around yeah. for a year or two, the concept of it, but mm -hmm. th the idea of it's been around for a while. We can talk a little bit about that. We have the biggest community on product-led growth. It's where people mm -hmm. can get answers. The introduction channel is very active. For me, that's one measure of health of a community. When people introduce themselves, they actually get replies. And from what I can see, our community is healthy, but there's definitely ways that we can uh, talk a little bit more about improving it as well. Sure. And maybe walk through before day zero or the earliest days, like what led you to believe that this community needed to exist? Yeah, for sure. Our community itself is driven by one question. Mm -hmm. What is product-led growth? Like there's yeah. so many misconceptions around it. And Wes was the one who, who started this community around that idea around how do you implement product-led growth? Who is involved? What's the organizational design of a, a group called? And that kind of, that problem or that question is what ties everybody together. Like it's not just a, a community for product people. We see people from customer yeah. success, from marketing, from operations join because to implement product like growth is not the role of product, the product team. It's actually the mm -hmm. role of the whole organization. We always say yeah. this, that it takes a village to raise a product-led business. And it really yeah. is true. So that's where this community came from, is this desire to really know more and understand and know the details and share tips, ask questions and connect with people because leading product-led in an organization can be lonely. Like some yeah. people just wanna connect, they just wanna network and that loneliness, not necessarily just that loneliness, but the desire to know is what drives yeah. people to, to be part of the community. I'm part of the Slack group, which is today at like 7,000 plus members. But when you started out, how did you go about gathering people together around this concept? Walk us through the earliest sure. days. For the earliest days is when people ask questions on Twitter, on Instagram, not yeah. Instagram, LinkedIn, <laughs> email. Right. It's in the book, Product-Led Growth. We, hey, if you have a question about Product-Led Growth, Wes and I, myself, we're active here. Very mm -hmm. early on, a lot of the response, like we, we were super active there. Somebody introduced themselves. We say yeah. hi back. Hey, how are you doing? What are you looking for? Let me connect you to the resource. If people mm -hmm. ask questions, we don't want to leave that open for an hour. We want to respond to that within five minutes. It's really important for them to feel like they're getting value out of the community, especially with the first hundred people in that community. If they don't feel like they're welcome, if they don't feel like their question is being answered, if they don't feel like they're getting value from that community, they are not going to stick around. And what happens when it gets to, you know, past that, they start seeing the culture. Like they start, like when I say culture, they start responding to questions. It, it's not Wes and I responding anymore. It's not yeah. Wes and saying hello anymore. It's the community itself. I love this definition by David Spinks. He wrote the book on the business mm -hmm. of community. Uh, he really says that community is about a shared empowered growth. Like you're empowering each other. So like the best way I think about community is if Wes and I disappeared, if Wes yeah. and I had not acted there for a week, people still be responding. And that's really when mm -hmm. uh, we, we got going. Going back to the answer, what did we do from day zero? Yeah. Drive people there if they have questions, first of all. Second, mm -hmm. respond to people right away. Introduce when they introduce themselves. Number three is get people to introduce themselves. Create this welcoming space so people are comfortable to welcome themselves. It's like coming into a party. Imagine like it's like a party. 
right? Yeah. Somebody walks into a party, you want people to be comfortable enough to introduce themselves. What happens when somebody introduces themselves? If they feel ignored, are they going to stick around? More likely not, they're going to leave that party. So the same way, get people to introduce themselves, welcome them right away, connect them to value. Great. I really like the party analogy and it's all about creating that welcoming experience. And, and I think the, the ethos that you just mentioned that you followed early on still stays today. So I can see on uh, the announcements channel, how you take the effort to highlight the new people who joined uh, and also talk about these are top questions asked and who responded, right? Who are participating in the community. So the scale that it is today, you mentioned those three things were important, but what really gets the community growing? What else like brings the community together to add value to each other? Yeah, this is something that I've been thinking a lot about. Actually, we're looking to get somebody to, to do this full time. Okay. It's around how do we identify community leaders inside a space? I see community as culture. And when I, I keep going back to culture, what is culture? What startup culture is about beer and pong or other things like that. Culture really is about what do we celebrate? What happens in this space? What is good behavior? What is like celebrated behavior? What is mm -hmm. uh, behavior that we don't encourage? And it's identifying those leaders who are contributing, who are responding. They're doing it out of their desire to help. Maybe they're trying to build a personal brand. Really mm -hmm. at this scale now, it's, it's a question of like, how do we identify those leaders to help us out? Because there will, there's a few questions in the ask a question channel in product like growth where it isn't responded. There right. is a few introductions where there, there isn't our timely response just because of the limitation of our team. The question now is how do we get people to help people inside the community? How do we celebrate that? How do we uh, reward that? Because community success leader is going to, to, to really take charge of it. It's celebrating uh, success within the community is, is, and when people see it celebrated, they're going to follow in that footsteps. They're going to follow yeah. the same thing as, as what they're seeing celebrated. Yeah. And I read this somewhere. And I think it was Eric from On Deck. He tweeted that decentralizing control or like mm -hmm. ownership is the best way to scale the community. So totally finding the champions from the community and giving them the responsibility to run the community uh, is the best way to scale. So would be interested to know more about some of the rituals that the community follows on a weekly basis or daily or what really defines the community? How do they come together? Yeah, I can talk to you about a new community member flow. Ideally, sure. the first yeah. step, when somebody joins, we want them, we encourage them. And this is something that we've been thinking a lot with that role is how do you get more people to introduce themselves? Going back to the party analogy, for us, success would be somebody join, comes into the party and introduce yeah. themselves because there will be lurkers. There will be people on the side. Yeah. And the reason why most people lurk, and this is maybe for me, is I don't feel secure enough. I don't feel comfortable enough to introduce mm -hmm. myself. How yeah. do you create that space where it's, Hey, we are going to welcome you to it. That's the first mechanics. The second mechanics is now plugging them into the different channels. Like, why did you come here? Are you trying to learn more? There's ask a question. There's some resources here. Are you trying to connect? Maybe there's some networking things here. Are you trying to maybe learn more and here are some free courses that we have. It's really driving home the point, like on a weekly basis, like what you're talking about weekly mechanics is starting off right from the beginning. What does success look like for you? Because when mm -hmm. people join a community, it's many different types of reasons. Some people want to learn, some people want to ask, some people want to network and trying to uh, understanding that and delivering a community experience tailored for your needs, particularly for the reason why you join is really the key here. And on a weekly basis now, ideally we'd want to check, Hey, did you find value this week? Did you ask that question? You got it answered or did, did you get a chance to connect with somebody who you might not have without this community? So really that's, that would be something that I, I would want to see going forward on a weekly basis for the members is to see them succeed, like really to empower them and yeah. get them to achieve what they're specifically looking for. There's a Slack group and then you hold events and another newsletter as well. Do the events happen on a regular basis? For sure. I see the events as a way to get gather the community mm -hmm. in one space. With yeah. Slack, it's asynchronous. People can reply back anytime they're over the world. And I start seeing uh, people, the same folks show up on the live Q&As where we host with experts. 
In terms of consistency of events, that's something that we're also uh, we're working on. Like ideally, you want like a consistent event. It could be a weekly, bi-weekly, so that people know what to expect. We tried out networking events. It just, yeah. once again, something that person we're looking to hire. It would help us hit bi-weekly, monthly, whatever it is, that mm -hmm. get people together to just to just hang out online or at some point would be to do it uh, in person when yeah. all the this stuff is, is, is done. Uh, it could be local chapters in different places where the, the, that's in London or Toronto where, or wherever it is. That's something that we're, once again, identifying those community leaders is going to be critical to help us ho host those uh, in-person meetups. Got it. So what, what's your uh, tech stack for this community? Like you, know, you have Slack, but what else goes behind tying all of this together? Maybe walk us through the tools that you use to you know, get the community going. Yes, <laughs> that's what we're a little skip on. I mean, that, once again, I keep saying yeah. that we're looking to get on this person. Yeah. We have Slack. We've tried a few apps that would introduce people to others, but it didn't work out so well. In terms of the events, we use uh, Zoom and then Luma, our tech stack for creating landing pages, and it creates it quickly without having to code anything. And it's built specifically for events. It's very useful and getting feedback and stuff. Some of the stuff that, that we're looking at plugging in is something, and this is not my field anymore. The person we're talking to is called Orbit Love. Like it's this yeah. tool that allows you to see the metrics of the engagement and health of, of the community. We're just plugging into Slack and all the metrics we, we get is from the Slack analytics where they sh we show the number of people who responded, the number of people who post per week. They, they have an active user uh, mm -hmm. metric, which yeah. is a tech stack, very simple and, and lean. Got it. And and would love to know some of the outcomes that the community has uh, brought about, like any uh, stories that come to mind on how uh, community members have benefited or they were able to land a job or get better yep. at that, that role. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that you just said it. There was one person who just locked me a few weeks ago. It was like, randomly, I, I just got a job and you wouldn't guess where. I got it from this community. Like I connected with them. Uh, they posted a job. We chatted on Slack, jumped on an interview. A week later, I got the job. And it was for a senior product role for this company. And I was like, wow, I took that screenshot, shared it to Wes and the rest of the product led team. Like, this is cool. This is going back to the David Spinks definition of community. Yeah. It's about shared uh, communal empowerment of people. And it just happened for them. Like it was out, like it wasn't us trying to be in the middle. It's now yeah. like people connecting with each other without us being there specifically. And that got us super, super excited. And now we're looking at, wait, is there ways to, to really get connect people better through this community here? Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. And, and it's always great to see such outcome happen on its own as the community scales. I think, you know, that also gets more people coming to the community too. Tell us a bit more about what's next for product led community for the coming year. What are some of the highlights? Like I mentioned. Keep going back to this role that, that we are yeah. hiring. The product led community has grown organically, like without us, like being there. And the next part, if I had to put in one word, would be intentionality. Mm -hmm. How can we be more intentional about connecting people? How can we be more intentional about onboarding new community members so that they know where to find value and resources right away? Yeah. How, how can we be more intentional about getting people to introduce themselves, to feel welcome, to feel like they're supported and that they're not going to be made fun of when they introduce yeah. themselves in that space? How can we be more intentional about connecting networking events? And even that, like we have networks, we have community inside of community. Mm -hmm. What most people see is our Slack community. We yeah. actually have other communities within that. We have a student community. Those are the ones that participate in our program. We have an mm -hmm. alumni community. Those are the people who have passed uh, our certification programs. We're thinking about a leader community. Those are for people who are most active within. How do we reward those? So th those are some things that community is w one of our core competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, it's yeah. what dif differentiates us from OpenView, from other product led growth training programs. I can probably say that we have one of the biggest and thriving uh, product like growth communities. And it just happened, it just happened naturally <laughs> because of <laughs> curiosity. And we are just at the brink of, I feel like product led growth in itself as a topic, it's still yeah. uh, at very early stages. In a few years, it's going to be like everybody's product led consultant. <laughs> and, <laughs> and at this space, at this time, we'd like to really establish ourselves as 
not just the largest, but the mm -hmm. most valuable product-led growth community in the world. <laughs> nice. I think, and, and the way we've grown organically, that's the best form of growth. Uh, and great to see that happen as well. For new community builders, or, or even if you had to go back in time and speak to a younger self on what would be the advice that you would give for someone starting out building a community? What should they really focus on? Talk to your community members, please. It's so <laughs> important not just talk to them over the platform you have. Jump on a Zoom, really. In the very early stage, a community is a path to a solution for people. It's mm -hmm. a path to, to a need, to a desire. And to, for us, for people who are starting out, really understand what that problem is. Really understand what it is that they're really looking for. Because now that you can start thinking about community events or resources or other things, even before you think about platform, that's one thing I see over and over again. Usually when somebody asks me, Hey, I want to build a community. What platform should I use? Ramley? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. No, I've even hear, heard Christina from content UK who built the community. She did it in person first over in, yeah. in a bar. Like <laughs> really just get to know your people, quote unquote, your people, the people who you're going to serve. And naturally, when they get value, they'll invite others. And then when people ask you, hey, do you know about X, Y, and Z? Yeah, I have a community for that. Here it is. That's just one advice I would say. It's really mm -hmm. tough for me because I'm an, an yeah. I'm naturally an introvert. So I don't usually like, I don't, I usually don't like talking. <laughs> I usually don't <laughs> like talking uh, to strangers. You're not a stranger now. That's why I'm quite talkative. <laughs> but yes, like that's fight that tendency to shut down and build this product led you know, like mm -hmm. this without talking to users, really talk to them, understand their core problems and serve them would be the Got best it. way to build and scale a community. Awesome. Yeah. And it's not so much about the platform. It's, it's about going where the users are that really matters. And like you said, community can be formed even by just talking to a few people and getting them together. Thanks for that. And yeah, so before uh, jumping off, like I know you recently launched a book, so maybe talk about what the book is about and, and yeah, like over to you to just give an overview of what's there in the book. By the way, I just bought yeah. that before the call. So looking forward to reading it. Yeah. yeah thank you. I appreciate it. The book is all about how to help uh, users become lifelong customers. So the idea around onboarding is to help people see the value of your product and not just see the value, but build habits with your product. And that's the path to retention and revenue referral, all the stuff that's bottom of the funnel for the pirate metrics, the acquisition, activation, revenue, referral, and retention of this framework. If somebody asked me once, can you apply this to communities? And I do, it could be applied. How do yeah. you build a great first experience for community members? Because if you yeah. build that leads to retention, <laughs> and yeah. if you have uh, a, a paid community or paid products down the funnel, it leads to revenue. And mm -hmm. of course, it leads to referral. So that first experience, the first impression is super critical. And that's where product-led onboarding, the book that I've written with, with Wes Bush, it really nails, like we, we have the six-step process to guide mm -hmm. people to creating this amazing first experiences with new users so that they really do become lifelong customers. You can, people can check it out on Amazon everywhere. You can also go to onboardingbook.com. That would direct them to the landing page, which will get them to the right links to get to the book. Great. And yeah, looking forward to reading it over the weekend. And thanks a lot, Ramli. This is great getting to know about how Product Led started out and how it scaled and what really gets the company together. Thanks again for taking the time. Really enjoyed the conversation and wishing you and, and Product Led all the best for what's coming up.